this genuine curiosity and wanting to know a person who is different from you is very important because I feel that <clears throat> this is the only way we can learn to care for one another is when we, you know, when we really open ourselves to them. Hi, I'm Marianne Redpath, head of Berlin Ali Generation. Today, I'm really happy to talk together with Venice Atienza, who is the director of the wonderful documental work Last Days at Sea, which was selected for Berlin Ali Generation Car Plus. Hi. Hey, Venice. Hi, I'm Marianne. We haven't met before, but I'm happy to meet you anyway in the Berlin Ali Meets studio. And first question to you. In one or two questions, what is your film about? Um, it's about my encounter with a boy named Rayboy and um, this last summer of his childhood that we spent together. Kiliti. Alam mo ba na yung mga ganyang crab? Kapag um, malaki na sila, iniiwan na nila yung shell nila na yan. Ah, talaga? Tapos siya naman, hahanap na siya ng iba pang shell. Yung malaki na. Ano yung mahirap te? It's difficult. It's oh, difficult. Changing shell. <laughs> Knowing that it's very difficult and it's stressful to make a film these days, um, I was wondering what, what was it uh, that kept you motivated and resilient in the making of the film? Wow. <laughs> to be honest, I think it's because like in the beginning when we were starting, it was just an idea that I had. But then when I started to like get other people involved, like I got a team to go with me and then when I also went there with Ray Boy, I told him that, okay, since we filmed this, we're gonna finish it and I'm gonna show you something. And so I think like, because I said it, I felt that, okay, I can't say no anymore. <laughs> like, I think I've gotten a lot of help from a lot of people and I felt this responsibility to keep the promise that I made. So that's why I just kept going. Okay, so um, aesthetically and formally speaking, especially, who would you say were your biggest allies in making the film? Wow, I think like, because we're a very small team. So it was just uh, me and another cinematographer and two editors and our producer, Fan, who is also the sound uh, recordist. And then we also have like our colorist and our sound designer. So this core team, really everyone brought something to the table. Uh, I feel like there were lots of decisions that I would not be brave enough to do by myself, but because I had them and I had always, someone was available to help me get through these doubts. And they would always say, okay, let's just experiment. Let's try and let's see how it goes. So I think this was the thing that made me more brave in taking risks. And in the end, these risks paid off. I feel like what we made in the end was representative of what I felt while I was with Ray Boy. So that was very important. Yeah. Yes, I, I agree with you. I love the film so much. It's so beautifully intimate. I think you have uh, the, the great uh, gift of, of uh, being together with your protagonist, who I want to talk about now, Ray Boy. Um, so you spent a lot of time with him before the shoot and then during the shoot. And um, I'm wondering about the process of working together with him in particular. Um, if you feel like uh, you actually learned something from him that you maybe didn't expect during the shoot. Oh yes, a lot, a lot. Because when I, I, this is my first film, like this is the first film that I made with a crew. Usually I would just work by myself. And so when I was with Ray Boy, I, at the beginning I had an idea of what a documentary is. You observe from a distance, you are far. Sometimes you interview or you are removed. But there was a moment I remember in the filming where Ray Boy said, I, I, I don't feel comfortable being filmed without you next to me. He said, I, I, I don't feel okay. I, I don't like the feeling of being watched, he told me. 
And when he told when he told me this, I felt like, okay, I I have to think of another way. And, but also, I felt that I had to respect his boundaries. And so I, what we did in the end, I I spoke with my team, and what we did in the end was that uh, we just put a lavalier on him and I, and I let go of the camera. Uh, because I, I was also holding the camera in some moments and I let go of the camera and I felt that because of this uh, limitation that Rayboy had, it also opened up other things. Like it allowed us to speak to each other just as ourselves. I wasn't worried about my framing. I wasn't worried about like if the light is nice. I was just speaking to him as myself. And we were really like sitting next to each other and listening. And somehow, sometimes I would forget that we were still recording the voice. To take this risk was also the thing that gave the film what it is now, yeah. Back to Ray Boy himself, this young boy growing up in a village, in a fishing village on the coast, isolated from uh, the big city and the rest of the country in the Philippines. Um, what was your, um, what, what would you say was your, fascination with him what was what is the grounds of of your fascination with him and with this person and following him through like you did i felt like um when i first met ray boy i i really remembered something like i really felt that i i felt i really felt like i knew him from before mm -hmm. but i but i never knew him like that was the first time that we met i i felt like at some point when i grew up i i accumulated the responsibilities and I started to stop playing. And I felt that when I met Ray Boy, I saw this person again and I recognized this. And I think this was the seed of my fascination with him. And I feel like it also allowed us to be close because I, I, I felt like, okay, I can play with him. Like he's a person who is very much willing to play and to talk and ask questions. I mean, I, I'm always shy to ask questions, but Ray Boy, he would just ask, you know, and this was what I hoped that I can also remember how to do again. So this was the thing that happened while we were together. Kapag hapon, nananahimik ang buong karihatag. Sabi ni Reboy, ito raw ay para makapagpahinga ang mga manging isda bago sila pumalaod sa gabi. Bata pa ako nung huli ako nakapagsyesta. Ngunit nung araw na yun, nakatulog din ako. It's a very particular setting that you have, that he lives in. It's his setting, it's his home. Could you elaborate on that a little bit more, um, what the community meant uh, for the film? Yes, so like uh, Karihatag is a small fishing village that is isolated. So it's right next to the sea, but it's also at the foot of a mountain. So it, uh, there are no roads. When, I, when we went in 2018 and in 2014 also, there were no roads that connected them. And so when it rained uh, during the rainy season, they would get locked in. And I feel that because of this need to survive and understanding how difficult it is to survive, they, they help each other. They, and I think like this is the thing that I also felt worried that Ray Boy would lose. You know, When I found out that he was going to leave and he was going to go to the city, I felt afraid that what's going to happen to him like in the city everyone is i mean at least here in manila most of the people are just everyone every man for themselves this is this is the thing that that really fascinates me about the community and this is the thing that touched me and i really hope that i was able to put it inside the film somehow Absolutely. Um, you know, you, you are portraying a village and a community on this coast in the situation they are making their living and their survival and their existence is, de is depending on the fishing that can happen before their door step into the ocean. There's so much water in the film, so much weather in the film. It's uh, obvious that things have changed also over time for the whole village. Um, did you set out to make a film 
about social injustice and about climate equality. Was that was that on your mind at the beginning? Yes, yes, yes. In the beginning, it was because um, that was how I met um, Ray Boy and people in Karihata. We were assigned by a non-government organization to make a film about how they survive, how they are able to survive, the kind of systems that they built, how they are, how they set up a marine sanctuary, like a place where they don't fish so that the fish could grow mm -hmm. in their, in like a small part of their sea. And I wanted to like make a film about this. This was the, the, the very start. And I was hoping that like, oh, Ray Boy would be in there and he would grow up to be a fisherman who, you know, who would also inherit this kind of way of taking care of nature. But when I found out that he was going to leave, I, I suddenly had, I, I don't know, I, I suddenly felt this urgency to somehow, because it made me think, okay, at some point there will be no more fishermen like them. You know, they, they fish with lines and hooks. They don't use heavy machinery. And somehow I felt that this, this whole way of living will one day, not now, maybe in 20 years, it will be gone because every single child wants to have another kind of life because it's not sustainable. So in the end, I really hope that even if I didn't get to make a very, very political film, that this idea that people are living in places where their livelihood and the only life that they know is being threatened, I hope that it somehow filters through. I believe it does. It did to me anyway. It touched me greatly on all of those levels that you're talking about. Um, and referring to that, um, I remembered when you accepted our invitation to screen the film at um, Generation K+. And, um, and I was very happy at the, warm, uh, the warmth of your, your acceptance because you expressed the deep wish um, to be able to uh, screen the film for younger audiences as well. When, when you think about audience for your film, is there anything that you would uh, like to tell them or ask them? Wow. <laughs> oh my gosh, I feel like I'm gonna cry. Can you give me like two seconds? <laughs> Yes, I'm no. sorry. But, yeah. No, 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 no. I, I feel like very privileged also to have the chance to like share the film. Um, wait. <laughs> um, but when I when I met Ray Boy, he really paid attention to things and also to people. Like I think most especially to people. He he really like I don't know when we would speak, he would really look at me and he would you know, tried to absorb and understand what I was saying. And I felt that um, this genuine curiosity and wanting to know a person who is different from you is very important to like to understand, you know, like he wanted to know what life was like in the city and he wanted to know what I felt about many things. And I felt that I hope that it is something that we don't, that we always remember to do that when we are, you know, in the face of another person to, to really look at them and listen and understand who they are, where, where they come from. Because I feel that <clears throat> this is the only way we can learn to care for one another is when we, you know, when we really open ourselves to them. No, I don't know if <laughs> Oo, nakakaabot sila. Ah, nakaabot? Oo, oh, gusto ko. Gusto kong lumilipad. Yung maglalaro, maglalaro sa... Diyan. Sa ulap? Oo. Gusto ko. Oo, oh, yung bird. One uh, more little question about Ray Boy. Of course, the film is finished now. As he, has he gone to school? Are you in contact with him? What's happening? Yeah, yeah, we, yeah. Like uh, he was the first person to see the cut, uh, the final cut. Yeah, wow. yeah. He, yeah, he, he saw it and he and he he gave his comments and and he told us that that he misses the person that he was in the film because now he's a bit older. He's fifteen years old now. Fifteen. So, wow. Yeah. yeah. But he's okay yeah. off in the big city. Is he surviving well? Yes, like, I mean, there are lots of things that have changed. Um, you know, it's a bit more difficult, but now because of COVID, he has to come back to Karihata. 
Okay. Um, because uh, yes, so like they are managing this, but otherwise he's okay. Like he he's learned to dance and to sing now. He likes uh, Korean pop music. He, he's a bit different, but somehow still the same. Yeah. Well, he's adolescent, you know, I think that happens anyway, no matter what your situation is. So, um, of course, the COVID pandemic has had a great effect on all uh, aspects of filmmaking and film distribution and film exhibition, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Did, the, did the pandemic have a great effect um, along this process for you during the last year? Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. um, because we we like the second half of the editing was finished completely in the distance. Mm -hmm. My mm -hmm. my editor is Colombian and she's living in Colombia. And at the time that we were editing, I was living in Mumbai. Wow. So we were uh, for ten months. We were editing from a distance, and of course it's it, it it's difficult. But also this distance because we couldn't be next to each other. It, it really challenged us to be specific with what we want to say. And like, and every day she would ask me, what is your intention for this scene, for that scene? So it, it somehow also forced me to be more clear with my intentions so that she can have the autonomy to play with the footage. One last question, because time is running out. I just so enjoy talking to you, but I think we could talk for a long time, but um, it interests me um, and the Berlinale and everyone, I think, who is listening to this. If you have, um, uh, what are your future plans? Do you have some new projects lined up or are you still busy with the post for um, for this film? It's um, so yeah, right, right now we are like finishing last day's yeah. like preparing for the screening uh, in the in March. But also I'm producing another film by the Taiwanese filmmaker named Fan Wu. Mm -hmm. And it's about the relationship between her and her friend and um, their ex uh, and their questions to each other with regards to like what they think about freedom and how they like learn from each other. So it's also a very close portrait uh, film. So, and it's also about a relation between two people. So uh, right now we are at the beginning of the production. So after, when we start the distribution of Last Days at Sea, I, I am moving forward with this next project. Okay, and Fan Wu is also the producer of Last Days at Sea, right? So you have yes. a collaboration uh, for a long time, I think. And thank you very much for this talk. Thank Bye. you. Bye.